Sure. Okay, so we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna kick it off. So three, two, one. Three, two, one. We're hitting a reset, and then we're gonna be live again. <laughs> we are, we're live again. Welcome everyone to <laughs> Cannabis <laughs> Oklahoma Magazine uh, podcast. I just love you. And I love technology. I love y'all. I love yeah, technology. It's fun. <laughs> we have a lot of you guests. Out we don't want to use, right? Yeah, we have a lot of guests joining us today. So uh, this is Carlos from Rogue 420, and I'm going to turn it over to Mary Jane uh, Media and Old School. If you guys can go through and introduce yourself to the audience, and we'll jump over to Laura and guests. Yeah, this is uh, DC, also known as Daryl Carnes, uh, with Mary Jane Media, as well as 788 Media. And then here I've got my counterpart, and I'll let him introduce himself. All right, this is John Frazier, a.k.a. also known as Old School. Old School, it's easier to remember. 788 Media, Canvas Oklahoma Magazine, and right on D.C. And got some more partners coming up right now. Oh, Laura Madison, <laughs> Canvas Oklahoma Magazine, 788 Media. John, here with my friend here, and Keeler. Uh -huh. Um, okay, so I'm Kimberly Campbell, and I'm with Sacred Flower, and we're a processing company, and we make really healing medicine. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, and it's very exciting to be here. You guys are doing some amazing things in Oklahoma. I think the latest statistics was one in 10 Oklahomans actually carry a med medical card. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen by accidents. That's advocates, that you know, patient advocates out there helping edu to educate in regards to the benefits of medical cannabis. So congratulations to all of you guys and the, and the you guys are all rock stars and doing some amazing things in Oklahoma. Thank you. <laughs> in my county alone was over $9 million in taxes in my county alone. Cool. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's amazing. So why don't you go ahead and share, uh, Kimberly, if you want to jump right into and explain about your company, your processing, and what you guys do. I heard you guys are doing some amazing things with some RSO. Uh -huh. So why don't you break it down for us? Okay, so we're putting RSO, which is super healing, and it's it's uh, it's a full extract cannabis oil, uh, ethanol extraction, so it extracts everything out of the plant material. Um we use um, we use tested product and it's a full panel product and then we infuse that into uh, free trade organic cocoa butter and um, the the effects are amazing and uh, suppositories um, the bioavailability the milligrams you don't have to have as many like as if you were going to ingest them um, the bioavailability is, is uh, like 70% versus like 20% if you eat it. So it's very effective in that route. It's been healing a lot of people. And it, yes. It, the, uh, everybody that's tried them has, for different reasons. Uh, shingles, cancer. Shingles, uh, menstrual cramps, uh, ovarian issues, uh, endometriosis. So women can use them in the front and... Uh, anybody? Yes, Richie Rich, one in ten. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right, Richard, one in ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah talking about these suppositories, I did test one of these night before last, and I tested. There's two ways you could test. I tested it just in case someone tries to abuse these. Mm -hmm. So I got uh, the full report. In case. Minute huh? by minute, I said you gave me the minute by minute full report. <laughs> I gave her the minute by minute. I told her when I told Laura when I stole and Ken when I started. I started telling the effects. Now the effects did start in my groin, mm -hmm. and then it traveled to my stomach, went to my chest, and then it traveled up the back of my head. Mm -hmm. Nothing unpleasant, completely relaxing. I had no ill effects the next day. Uh, I was very impressed with it, and I'm going to try it the correct way tonight. I was going to try it last night, but I was out late last night, so I didn't want to do it. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Adriel Carnes really wants to to try them for body aches and and pain. So, what, what are your thoughts on that, Kimberly? I think I've I got think nothing but positive you. feedback on him, Kim. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, my son, he uses them for his sciatica, and it's made a world of difference in just the quality of life of being able to sit at a desk and do financial uh, work and. Uh, it's her healing the nerve endings. So it, it's not just masking the pain. It's actually healing right. the nerve endings. So I can see that because I've got herniated disc in my back. Me well, too. it traveled from my groin right to my lower back. Right. And that was, you know, first place, second place I started getting relief. It was great. Yeah. 
Yeah. And how did Rose, you said, said Rose tested that as well? Do what? You said Rose, Rose, did, Rose. Well? Oh, yes, Rose did. Yeah, no, she follows instructions. <laughs> so she did test it as well. And uh, she didn't get, you know, she's not quite as uh, observant about the effects as I am. But she went to sleep and had a very good night's sleep. Oh, by the way, I usually go to sleep at 1130. I went to sleep that night at uh, about 10, 930, 10. Very wow. good. I took it about, took it about seven. I, I took it at seven, I know. And the effects started getting me about 745, seven forty-five. Well, I know too because I kept getting it beep, 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 beep. I feel it wrapping around my head. <laughs> I feel wrapping so everybody that's been trying them has been taking notes uh, how they feel at the time, uh, at, before, and after, so that we get an accurate account of exactly what they're doing. And also, when you had your last meal, you know, there's going to be several variables in there we really do need to track. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to be different. Um, everybody's yeah. body is different. Yeah, so we started you know, out. I, at well, I, was, I was impressed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's yeah, that's truly amazing to hear that type of, of, of feedback. And so in terms of like when you do get with a uh, particular patient and you verify, what's your recommended? Because I, I think one of the challenging things with uh, cannabis is it, it affects everyone just a little bit differently. So in terms of that uh, dispensing, in terms of the amount, what's your recommendation as far as you know the starting dosage? Um, we're starting out at 25 milligrams. And um, with suppositories, there's, uh, there's a protocol so that you don't get as much of the head high. Um, so if you insert them uh, just up to the first digit, so you're just barely going to insert them in between the two sphincters, and that way you don't get the head high. If, you, if they go up further than that, then they're going to come in contact with the vagus nerve, and then they're going to be more effective. <laughs> And, and we, oh, Vegas, uh, we call it going to Vegas because it's the Vegas nerve, and that is what John did. He went to Vegas the first time. He went to time. Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, if so, if I would suggest anybody to just do it the regular way, and, and I would too, because you know, if you go to the Vegas, it's quite a tour. Yeah. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Yeah. Welcome, Cindy. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. We got. We have to give shouts out to the, the to the people oh, yeah. that are watching and give them some love, right? So, love you so guys. There you go. So the, yeah. So for those joining the live stream, do us a favor. Make sure to share this. Uh, share this live stream and your okay. network. You know, friends, family. Well, I can share. Right? I can share. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now, Kim, we also know there's no nothing toxic or anything bad oh. in these suppositories, right? No, it's totally. You know, I'm also. You know what? I'm also going to do. If it can go in one end, it can go in the other, right? Correct. I'm gonna try to eat, I'm gonna try to eat, can eat it. You can eat it. You can also, if use you, it. yeah, you can use it as a topical. <laughs> if two mil little capsule, you know, little bullet, and you could use it topically. Um, women could use it in the front for uh, nerve ending stimulation. Cool. So, yeah. And again, this cannabis, this like good plant works for me. You can use it all over. I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. And then in terms of um, like your, your lab and the processing, everything, can you, uh, what, what kind of test you guys uh, complete? On okay. Your so for the RSO, for the concentrate that we put into the suppositories, we're going to get a full panel. So we're going to get a full panel of everything. Um, and then, um, then once we put the uh, concentrate into the suppositories, then we will get a uh, cannabinoid profile, or a milligram count of cannabinoids, and a mic micro uh, uh, the bacterial uh, the microbe count to make sure that it's all microbial microbial plant microbacterial yes same thing. Right. So, yeah. So that's how we do that. And um, 
and it's all tested. Um, we took some to Scissor Tail Labs. Uh, thank you, Scissor Tail. Um, I want to give a shout out to Scissor Tail because he was so nice. I didn't know the pro the procedure or process. I went in there knowing nothing, and he explained everything that I needed to do. And we sat and talked for thirty minutes. He gave me ideas Hi, on. Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Thank you. So, What's up, Roger? you guys know? Do you guys know Ian Cameron at Scissor Tail? I don't. I don't. I've seen posts from them, but I, I've never like actually got a chance to meet him. I think maybe I ran into him at High Times Cup, but didn't get to spend a whole lot of time. We know how that was. Yeah, yeah. he's a great guy. He's um, they've got a it's husband and wife, I believe Sarah and Ian, and they they moved here to open a lab and just want to do good things. So they're they're treating people right and they're doing good work. So one thing I really like about Suzutel is they were one of the very first labs that I saw when everybody was kind of scrambling around um, to figure out what these lab tests mean, uh, you know, by terminology and the titles and all the different things that you see on the test. Uh, you know, that scissor tail went above and beyond by kind of throwing out a mock test that explained mm -hmm. every single portion of the test. That's one thing that stuck in my mind to really like about mm -hmm. scissor tail labs is that they were, I you know, passionate about educating that. That's what he loved to do. You're educating somebody. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he, he does drives all, or uh, round tables all over the state where he teaches people what he what right. his methods are. And I mean, he's looking for places, dispensaries, mm -hmm. you know, any places like that that would want the education mm -hmm. because he does. He goes all over the place teaching because he wants people yeah. educated about what you know. We talked about formulation. We talked about less. Uh, uh, emulsifiers and what they would do to testing and uh it makes it more difficult to test so if you're doing edibles and you're adding uh sunflower lethicin they're you know joshua monahan yeah welcome hello. Duncan. <laughs> hello from duncan what yeah well um, well, I applaud you for all your work, and I completely, you know, in, in regards to the testing and the compliance, I think it's just so important, especially for for patient safety, right? I mean, but I think those, those companies that want to be reputable, they'll do the, they'll do the right things in terms of the testing, just to ensure that whether it's the the, the potential chemical overspray or just for that matter, just in terms of the uh, the the pro the profiles of the of the cannabinoids yeah. and the THC content. Um, and in fact, I think that it's it's law now required for testing in Oklahoma. Is that what I read recently that there there is an update to the law regarding testing? Are you guys up to speed on that? I haven't read it fully, but yeah, um, August 29th, I believe, was the deadline for implementation of the testing. And then the packaging was September 13th and 14th. So the last implementations that we had was August 29th. Uh, and then the last one was the September 14th. Mm -hmm. I'm so, all for the testing. I'm not too wild about where they've changed some of the packaging, but yeah, all for testing, right off. Yeah, you don't. I'm all about it. I Make just uh, there's one thing I'd like to you know bring up. I, I'd like for them to come up with some form of a written, you know, this is how it's supposed to be done. You know, I one like of the things to go into. Right. Do you have tests that are, you know, liquid chromatography? Then you have a test that's of another form, and they're not being malicious in any type of way, just that the tests produce different results. So who's doing it right? Which, which way is the way that Oklahoma is going to go? And uh, we need that clearly defined. So that's a big issue in the, well, in the I, agree right with you. I, I agree with you on that aspect. Um, that's what even, even Cesar Tail was having a problem with that because his, you know, all the lab results are are, are Very. testing different and they're completely, you know, not even close to similar, actually. And he's the only go. lab that is actually people in people people. almost it's identical it. every single time. So, of course, yeah. it was assumed negative instead of, you know, it just he figured out a better method. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I know he's doing a good thing and I know he's, you know, being a you know, write about what he's doing. He's just figured out a better way. Um, and a lot of it's just simply the testing method. Like I said, exactly. they're not trying to be malicious in any way, sort of form. It's just the testing method. Which way is the way that Oklahoma is going to go with? And everybody, in my opinion, would need to do it that way to provide that consistency to the market. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the that's a crazy part in terms of the implementation. And never do I want the regulations to slow down like the industry in terms of 
but there is a lot of times that, that the uh, testing and everything is like an afterthought. It's like, okay, we're, we're producing, we're growing, we're manufacturing. And then it's, like, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh, man, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> no, testing is first for me, right? It should yeah, be. And, you know, and there's certain, there's certain states, I know in Louisiana, they actually had their first grow come in and the state hadn't even uh, put the testing uh, regulations in. So that first crop that came in in Louisiana, they had to destroy it all because they couldn't. Oh, no. They had no oh, information. Like Indiana there, CJ. <laughs> Another that? thing that's important, you got to have some form of remediation. You know, that's very important when, you know, you got to have one, a testing standard, right? You got to have the people in place that are certified to do that testing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, ultimately, everybody's got to be held to the same standard. Yep. I mean, that's off the board, I think, with anything, though. I mean, that, that isn't that the similar problem anywhere, you know, we are at work or wherever the case may be, there's always a difference in, in regulations or rules, and it's... Yeah, there you go. Hopefully, this meeting, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> this meeting that's coming up, um, you know, where they, you know, we did the March on LMA, we went up there, I think, three, four hundred deep, we went right through the doors of the Oklahoma State, you know, Department of Health, and... Uh, they finally responded to that meeting. Uh, it wasn't the way we wanted to go, but heck, we had reached out to, you know, we had reached out to the head of the department. We had reached out to the acting director. We had reached out to everybody with no response whatsoever. So that's what we did, you know, and, you know, it kind of stinks, but it's, it's, it's we just keep educating. We just keep moving forward. Keep moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it may not work every time, but it will. It looks like the sea of doors is sending us a little love. Yeah, absolutely. Doors says, "Love you guys. You're doing amazing work. You are awesome. Thanks for the support. You bet. So, and, without the support. And what do we have coming up next Thursday, DC? Did you want to? Um, yeah, so it's it's going to be really really exciting. You know, this isn't you know something that you would consider happening in every single legal state out there. But we're actually going to have the opportunity, you know, kind of the mother of cannabis within the legislative group. Yeah. Uh, is, you know, Miss Senator Connie Johnson. Woo! And uh, we're going to have the opportunity Woo! as Cannabis Oklahoma Magazine, as Old School and Company, as Mary Jane Media to bring her into Mary Jane Dispensary every single Thursday. She's going to help educate the patients on, uh, you know, how to get registered, the process of voting, why it's important. And, uh, you know, maybe touch on a few cannabis topics ex as well. And so that's going to be an exciting time for us. And like I said, you know, typically, you know, somebody from the legislative group and then somebody from the cannabis group, they don't really intermingle too much. But we're blessed here in Oklahoma to have, you know, Miss uh, Connie Johnson uh, to, you know, we to, for us as a cannabis industry to be able to call a friend. Oh, so yeah. That's big. That's Absolutely. huge. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it is. One thing we do forget is registering to vote. I've been slipping on registering people to vote. I need to order another case of uh, better registration forms and start passing out before I go. Yeah, well, that's one of the things she wants to do is just come in and show people the right way to vote to mm -hmm. where, you know, their voice, one voice does matter. You know, a lot of people don't vote because one it's not going to matter, but it does. It does. One voice right. really change a whole. So, yeah, absolutely. We all have to out there and do that. And that's, it's awesome that we have, you know, a senator that's working with us to create that awareness. It's important to her. Yeah, sure. yeah I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you said that because that's so important is that sometimes we get fixated on like national legislation or what's occurring nationally. But, you know, if you're not in tune to your your city councilors, your your mayor in the in the cities that you live. I mean, a lot of the times when these happen and, and there is a new form that has to be submitted this year with licensing uh, that requires you to go to your local municipality and 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 have that form. submitted. I can't remember the exact name. Uh, but that has to be has to be submitted. So it's important to know uh, where you live in the city and the in the yeah. county, and and you know who's running, and stay in tune with the the whole political scene. It's it's just a you know unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but most of the advocacy and most of what we're doing gets that done through a legislative process um, yeah. to you know to 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 do it. So it's great that you guys are focusing in on the on the state, getting to get out get out to vote. Every uh, that's Thursday, definitely. 420. Check, check yeah. your friends. Call it look at look up uh, badvoter.com and mm -hmm. make sure your friends are, are are doing what they're supposed to do too. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and talking about those legislators, like say, once you meet those legislators and start start talking to them, you know, you put them in office. They work for you. 
So once you start talking to them, you find out they're just a regular person. They just got a job. They're trying to do the best they can. You know, you don't see all the stuff that's coming out of it. And it's, exactly. it's funny, too, because just to touch on that for a second. Yeah, you know, it sounds like I may have lost my mic of, a little bit. We you send a lot ahead. of, you know, letters and, and messages to legislators. And you think that that stuff, uh, you know, goes unnoticed or it just goes to an inbox and they don't see it. I've literally got letters back from those legislators to say, dang, D.C., you've been persistent. You know, you've had to have emailed me and messaged me, you know, five, 10, 15 times. Uh, what can I do to help you? And it's like almost like you've got to establish this consistency that, hey, I'm not going to go away. Yeah. I don't have to be malicious. I don't have to be rude. I don't have to demand anything, but I'm not going to go away. I'm going to keep you requesting. Gotta, and we're gonna you keep got to stick with yep. it. That you just got to keep going. Little educate, educate, educate. educate. And I love how passionate DC gets when he talks about I do politics. Too. I do too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm passionate. There's an election coming up, yo. <laughs> oh, what yeah. Up, Tyler Tyler Parker. Parker. Tyler, howdy, y'all. Hey, Tyler, howdy. I don't hey, know you yeah, is I think my we're mic losing still? some service out here. There's some wind or something. I'm not sure. Carlos, I can hear your mic pretty well. Okay, good. I because Carlos is fine, okay. too. Yeah, I had a, a little pop-up that said your mic has became disconnected. I'm like, I don't think it's, it's right here. I don't, I don't see you moving or anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you ever lost sound. I can hear you the whole time. Okay, great. All right, cool. Go, go ahead. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. So what else What What else have we got doing, going on Uh well, I, I, I do want to share a little bit because there is uh, a lot of conversation regarding national uh, legalization and and uh, I won't name the organization, but I did receive a, a bullet point that said, hey, you know, and this all regard what, what happened whenever the, the, the vapes, the THC vapes or the black market that, you know, caused that whole uproar and uh, it has been really affecting even some states that have banned flavoring and all those <laughs> together. And and I received a, a, a letter from an organization that advocates nationally for legalization. And what I was really surprised about that they were wanting to blanket give permission to like the FDA uh, to establish uh, state guidelines and to say, hey, we think the federal the federal government needs to establish guidelines for all states. And I I sent them an email back and I'm like, are you sure you really wanna do that? You really- Yeah, really, come on. Yeah, you, you really don't want that. You really would rather them stay out of the way uh, as opposed to yeah, rather, yeah. rather cannabis stay illegal federally than the government to step in and say, we're going to le legalize and take control over. It's the almost industry. like it's almost like they're trying to create one beast. So you only have one head of a beast. Right. And it's a pathway to get to like a broad legalization. But is it the right path? I think it's questionable. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I and I agree. I understand the, the 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 goal in regards to patient safety, which I think all of us would support, right? All of us would support that. Yeah. But I don't think that that the route to safety is is allowing organizations like the FDA or the CDC. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they have a very good track record. If you look at the opioid addiction, I'm not sure who. Uh, allowed the opioids to be produced and manufactured. <laughs> so it's not like our federal programs have a very good track record of ensuring safety of patients. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everybody can be, everything can be good if it's used mm -hmm. in the appropriate way. Mm -hmm. So I think we just have to hold everybody, everybody accountable. accountable for, and watch you know, for sneaky stuff. And we need to get those regulations set, like DC said, mm -hmm. where we have and the protocols in place and they don't keep- Those vapes, you know, in my opinion, the vapes that are killing people are the black market vapes, the bootleg vapes. I've been to several factories and manufacturers that do these vapes. I know how they're, and I use the vape then, so I know how they're manufactured. Mm -hmm. It's that black market that I've been finding well, black market. It's program. untested and you're going to purchase it. You're taking that risk of what, you know, what's going to happen. So, I mean, that's oh, yeah. why that's why some of those regulations are necessary because, I mean, it needs to be tested. You don't know what's being on, you know, what's on there. But there was somebody that just was, did you see that news story today about the, the, the PCP laced, uh, someone was sold fake marijuana. Oh, no, I did not. No, I believe it though. No, I've not seen it, but we've seen several. They, I mean, they died. Well, oh, they did. Oh, that's scary. 
That's scary. You know, and that's the thing. I think everyone has to come to the realization that I've always said this time and time again, that despise, despite the industry, despite the profession, there's always going to be good and bad actors, no matter what you do. Right. right. I mean, that that's going yeah. to, that's you going to. One or the other. You just got to find the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to, you have to try to find a way to mitigate those things and mm -hmm. by establishing those protocols. But if you're an individual uh, customer or you're a business and someone is coming to you and they're 50% cheaper than what the rest of the market is, uh, there's probably yeah. a chance that those may not be deemed from an actual proper processing company or or grower. It could be something a little bit different. Well, and not only are you putting, you your, at risk, you're putting your license at risk if you're buying yeah. tested flour, you know what I mean? Well, here's the thing. If you're, yeah, if you're going to the dispensary and we're talking about you're buying a bag, Ask for the test result. Even if you're at a dispensary, that's not the case. They're not buying black market vapes. Yeah. But the test results should tell the story. They'll tell the story. Absolutely. Right there. And if you're given a hard time about asking for labs, you might not be in the right uh, dispensary. Right. I mean, they I wouldn't be able to get out of there fast enough that they can't <laughs> get any test results. Right. <laughs> if the procedure's being followed, there should be no issue with the question. Yeah. If there's no issue at all. They should just throw it down. I mean, that's one of the deals I started back with CBD is asking for those test results because there was people that couldn't have uh, THC and some of the CBD we had mm -hmm. had THC in it. So I started checking those test results so I could tell people which stores they could go to and find the THC free products. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, yep. And I, I was very jealous that I didn't make it down last weekend for your guys' bonfire and everything. I saw a lot of the pictures. I was very envious. I was very jealous. <laughs> I was envious, too. I didn't get to make it either, Carlos. So. Yeah. But they had a great weekend. It was, uh, a I, week. it was pretty rough weekend. on somebody. <laughs> uh -huh. It was pretty rough on some of us, though, you know, some mm -hmm. the traveling, you know, but it, it was all worth it. That's hanging out with the patients. And, and, okay, uh, it, was, it was an hour, hour and 25 minutes from Tulsa, right? It was an hour and 25 minutes away, but it took us three, almost and three hours. And took us, what, two and a half hours more? We got up there by the lake and everything. We'd lose a GPS signal. It's a turn up here left. And Take us to drive into the lake. <laughs> we right. turn left and say, oh, no, you got to go the other way. You're 10 minutes away now. We asked for directions like 50 times the name of the cabins. I'm like, how do you not know what the name of the cabins are? <laughs> <laughs> I do, have a, I, I do have a question, and I'm not sure if we have enough time for this podcast, but in, in the future, but are, are, do you guys have any concern? Because obviously we're we're really pushing and advocating for cannabis as a, as a means for medicinal purposes. Uh, do you guys have any concerns at some point that, that that falls under the FDA umbrella where they say, hey, you know what? Yeah, you're right. It is medicine. So therefore it has to be treated that way. Do you guys have any I'm concerns? I'm very worried about that as a processor. Very worried about that as a process or getting it taken away from me being able to make the medicine. Uh, I'm probably on the opposite side of that. I don't worry about it as much because I think the states would rise up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Up, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, yeah I, I hope so because I think that that, because I already know, I already know, I believe there's like a synthetic uh, THC or something like that. That's an, that's oh, Marinol, I hate I, I've never done it, but I know people that have done it. I hate it with a patch. Yeah, mm -hmm. typically so they so use like cancer patients. I had a, uh, a brother in law uh, at one point in time that he had like a, a brain cancer or brain tumor that was cancerous and he was, uh, you know, prescribed the Marinol. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn asked a great uh, question and uh, Glenn, we are working on technology for as far as a call numbers. As a matter of fact, that that's why this live stream was a little bit messed up because it's a new uh, platform that we're leveraging for our live stream. So we're going to be sampling a couple of different uh, platforms. And then by all means, I'm all in about the love and the sharing. So whenever we figure out a solution that works, we'll share that. So that way you guys can call in and and ask questions during Absolutely. the live stream. I think that'd be so much fun to have live call in the hotkey. Yeah. I believe that I might have a way to do a call in with my little podcast setup. It's got a Bluetooth that's up to your phone and allows for a call in number. Sweet. There we go. Uh, there we go. PC, um, what do we have coming up on the 28th at your dispensary? I think it's the 24th, right? No, no, the, the patient drive, right? Oh, yeah, the patient drive. We're trying to uh, get everything locked down for that. Uh, we were able to talk to uh, the building owner here at the facility that we have now. 
Uh, we're looking to do uh, a free patient drive. We're going to put that together the absolute best that we can with the best group of people that we can. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, we're looking to get that set up, I believe, the 28th. And uh, is Four. Senator Connie Johnson going to come for that one as yes, well? Yes, that's her. That's okay. her event. Yeah. yeah. That is her event. So oh. uh, I know that we're talking free patient drive, and we've been talking about other drives. So I want to make sure I was talking about the right one. Yes. So this one will be put on essentially by uh, Senator Connie Johnson. We're going to help support that event, bring people out, uh, maybe have some food trucks scheduled, things like that, and uh, get some. Watching that want to help sponsor that mm -hmm. free patient you drive, us? you know, come out. Yeah, right on. Currently, we are. Uh, you know, granted, 788 Media is set up to become a nonprofit, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, we are looking for sponsors for this event, uh, for Senator Connie Johnson's event, uh, for that free patient drive. So if you're a doctor out there, this could be a good publicity for you. It could show that you're, you know, helping the patients, that you're on board with the cannabis thing. Got to keep in mind, you know, we're up to 200,000 patients now. We're talking one in 10 Oklahoma. It's got a patient card it could be good for the next sponsor to sponsor that event. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to hit us up on the 788 Media Facebook page. You can find that. Uh, yeah. While you're there, like and share it, if you will. But uh, we can take PMs or DM messages. They'll go straight to John. school or Laura. Or contact John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> only contact John. He I'll tell you what, if you're a doctor and you're willing to do a free patient drive, he could call me. Yeah, oh, that's right. Uh, and we're still working on the shoebox drive, right? Uh, yes, um, that is something that I'm going to work uh, with Mary Jane Media, Cannabis Oklahoma Magazine, and 788 Media as a conglomerate and old school and company. We're looking to put on a, uh, a shoebox drive. It'll essentially be uh, to where, you know, a patient comes in, they decide they want to participate in the program, and instead of having one place, uh, a lot of places, you know, do coats for kids or they do uh, whatever it may be for the homeless. We're going to have shoe boxes that are kind of designated. This is a children's box. This is a, you know, for the elderly. This is a winterized box. And we're going to you can pick whichever group that you want to help or you want to help support. Then when you bring that shoe box back, it, it is a donation. So this is going to be distributed to the respective organizations. Uh, whether we go to the homeless shelters or whether we just go downtown underneath the bridges and do some pass stuff down out. there and physically pass those out. But we want to do a big shoebox drive, not just in the 405, but it's kind of our uh, mission to unite the 580 into this. So find a facility that wants to host that shoebox drive there. And then also a facility in the 918. That's going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool because we're going to like build half bridges with our shoe boxes because they're stackable like bricks. Right. And, and we're going to bridge. Yeah. We're going to do a, uh, we're going to do bridge the, all three of the area codes, the, you know, of the state yeah. together in a collage photo, which is going to be really neat at the end. So building bridges uh, in the community. Cool. Yeah. It's going to help a lot of people. If you have an opportunity, please uh, support that in whatever respective area you're in. If you're in the 580, uh, we'll announce the facility that we find there. If you're in the 9 Laura's got a lot of contacts there. She's working on that. And uh, so it's going to be really cool. But once again, you'll come in, you'll, you know, decide I want to do the shoebox drive, we're going to shoebox, can you bring that shoebox back? Whatever facility hosts that event, we're asking that you do a 15% discount for that patient's order when they buy something from your dispensary. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Well, we're trying to get as many dispensaries involved in this. This isn't just one dispensary, like DC was saying. This is, we're going as many people as involved in this. So every time we walk in a dispensary, I want to see a stack of shoe boxes sitting there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's go around the horn real quick and let's uh, let's plug and share our information. So I have the uh, Sacred Flower uh, site uh, brought up right now. I'm not sure if you guys can can see that at all. Uh, on my <laughs> Unless you have like little tiny razor pointed eyes that like, you okay, know. How's that? Is that better? That. <laughs> oh, that's better. Yeah. Here we go. Better. Yes, let's go around the world. That, that logo looks good, Kim. Thank oh. you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, plug your, your site and your social media handles. And, and for our listeners, how can they learn more about, about your work with Sacred Flower? Talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> plug your business. <laughs> okay. Um, no pressure, Kim. 
Sacred Flower. Sacred Flower. Um, I haven't got a website yet. Um, we're in the process. Of yeah, we're in the process of getting that done. Um, the, the only way is to, I'm on Facebook as a, a page and I'm known just by word of mouth right now. It's so, at Sacred Flower. Yeah. And you can email me at uh, sacredflowerkimberly at gmail.com. Excellent. Very good. Uh, Laura, go for it. Cannabis Oklahoma Magazine. Uh, you can go to uh, <laughs> the, the page at www.cannabisoklahomamagazine.com. You can follow me on Facebook at, at Cannabis Oklahoma Magazine, uh, Instagram at Canamag OK, and on Twitter at Rebranded Go. Yep, absolutely. And then also our, uh, 780 uh, Media Group, correct? Absolutely. Yes. That's a hole. So I, I, I was going to let someone else announce. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. All the yeah, cool. So we got 788 Media Group. Uh, you got DC here with Mary Jane Media. Keep in mind, the media group is comprised of a bunch of, you know, other organizations and entities put together. So it's a cool collaborative. community, uh, collaborative. You got old school uh, and company. Then you got Cannabis Oklahoma Magazine. And then all of us, you got Kimberly Campbell with Sacred Woo! Flower. This continues on, continues but I'll announce the ones that we have yeah. here right now. Uh, that's the dispensary page. You want to pull up the Mary Jane Media page. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I skip that one? I better go back. Yeah, I try not to, try not to have the, you know, keep the, the advocacy and what I do. I keep it separate from the dispensary. That way it's. That is completely my bad. I had the dispensary up and it's Mary Jane Media, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mary Jane Media. Yeah, sorry about that. I thought I thought I had the right one up. There it is. Yeah. Like your logo, by the way. You didn't go. Yeah, can you? Yeah. So I'm gonna bring that up for you. Not a little bit too. So. Um, there we go. There That's we it. go. Yep, love it. Woo. Really right neat. There. Yeah, it's really neat. I yeah, love it. Great. That's great. Okay. Any closing thoughts before we wrap up this uh, edition of Cannabis Culture? Uh, let's go around the horn. Any, our any closing thoughts? We can no longer hear you. Well, I can still yeah. hear a little bit. I can hear a little bit. You guys can, can hear me? Our volume's turned all the way on. We're working on it, guys. We're fine. <laughs> okay. I think we're, ready. we're getting there. We're ready. We're tweaking all right. It out. Is it any better now? Is that better? Much. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. It's just Look, I'm old I'm school. Up. Follow me on I'm old school company. Just Google me, old school. You'll find me everywhere. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I'm not on. I might be on Twitter. I don't know. I'm all kinds. Of little bitty dots I'm all on over Twitter the place. So just follow me. Okay, go in old school and find me. Awesome. To DC with Mary Jane Media. You can find me on Instagram at Mary Jane OKC. You can also find me on Facebook, Mary Jane Media. Just simply type it into the search bar. Should pull me up. Uh, you go ahead and like and share the page. If you need to send me a message, shoot me a message on there, and I'll be happy to answer. Sweet. Awesome. Well, you guys rock. Absolutely. Rock. So, so we can barely hear you. So, yeah, it's always a lot of fun. We'll do this again uh, Fridays, 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central. Uh, I was I want to make sure to get that right. And again, thank you guys for joining. It was a lot of fun. Congratulations on the awesome work you're doing in Oklahoma. And uh, until next Friday. Thank you. All right. See you all. Right, all right. Be safe. And also thank for our listeners.